What's up, my friends and the viewers of the tube? I've been a big fan of the play to earn space for about a year now. And now I'm kind of giving it second thoughts because can the play to earn model be sustainable? And I don't think it is. And I'm gonna go over why I don't think it is here in a moment, but let's go over the juicy, juicy details right now. Remember to like and subscribe, smash the like button and ring that notification bell. And let's get into it. So these are axes a lot. There's 624,000 axes with a lot of them at a dollar. And they were actually, uh, the thing about it is, a lot of these axes were going for $300, $1,000, quite a bit of money, and now they have crashed to about a dollar. This is not the only one, only play to earn game that has crashed to a dollar. If we look at pay axes, some of these were going for a thousand, two thousand, and now they're going for cents, pennies, 19 cents, 22 cents, uh, you know, a quarter. So like a lot of these are pretty much zero. And if we go to the recent events, which is nothing to do with crypto, but with World of Warcraft, if we actually go to the World of Warcraft site, you can see NetEase has suspended uh, game services in China. So with that said, essentially NetEase is a Chinese company that was partnering with Activision Blizzard to be able to provide uh, all the games from Activision Blizzard through NetEase because I guess you need some kind of partnership within a China company. And now Activision Blizzard and NetEase are splitting up that partnership. And now for the last 14 years, players that have been playing in China will no longer have access to their accounts. And the big thing about play to earn game is gaming is they talk about owning your own assets and how you actually own the assets within game. But if that game company goes bankrupt or decides to suspend all of their games or their uh, just the game itself, those assets are now worthless. So the appeal of play to earn gaming is really, do you think the company is going to last? And if you think the company is going to last, then it's it might be worth it. But even as we can see with China and NetEase and Blizzard, Activ um, Blizzard Activision uh, or Activision Blizzard, it doesn't matter if like a company decides to cut off their... Um, subscription with a partnership with another company or a, like a median to run a different service, that asset is no longer valuable. Even though you can't really sell your in-game characters from Blizzard, which you can, which you can on the black, essentially the black gray market in the gaming space. But how is that any different than say a blockchain company finds that it's no longer profitable. And let me give you an example. So we talked about um, Blizzard and Activision, but say Action Infinity with their game, because uh, they only, I think they only, the only income they make is the sales from this uh, thing. Obviously they have reserves and to their tokens and that sort of thing, but if we look at the, the amount of volume here at 33 ether, and I think they believe the market fees, they get 4%. So um, let's do calculator online. So we do three, I think it was 3,300 Ethereum. And the price of current ETH is $1,200. So 1,200, that's $3 million a um, a, uh, a month. And we times that 0 0.04. So they're making $100,000, $158,000 a month and fees um, from their marketplace. And you have to think like, is that enough money to pay for all their employees, to pay for advertisements, to pay for hosting and servers and all of that. So if Axie Infinity is only making $100,000 in fees and they decide, you know what, like the, holding this company is costing me too much money to actually use, to actually do, I'm losing money with this company, then, and they decide to go belly up and shut down everything. Like all these assets are now worthless. 
and you aren't able to like only these assets, these NFTs or whatever, aren't really going to benefit you because you can't take them over. Say they close down, you're not able to take them to another uh, company to use them. They have no kind of interchangeable or median to like go into other games with them. So essentially they become useless NFTs or, or they're like, a, I mean, they're like a shit coin essentially. So with that said, until games are or assets are being able to be used from one say game to the next, owning digital assets are kind of a waste. Um, and I'm going to go over more in detail of what I'm doing for my strategies on holding crypto. But and I'm still investing in play to earn games. I still have my uh, uh, Mirandis land. I still have. A bunch of other assets that are in Mirandus. I still have my Gallon nodes. So I'm not exiting crypto whatsoever. Um, I just have found one, the games are shit. And two, I'd rather just own a game and say, for instance, you know, we've already kind of had NFTs or owning our own digital assets in a, in a way. And I'll show you what I mean because I've been doing this for years. So uh, I, like I said, I played World of Warcraft. If you're a World of Warcraft player, drop your server and character down below what's your favorite class i'm excited about the next expansion but i mean i would literally go on these forums like owncore and sell my accounts my gold my digital currencies for real life money i mean you can literally sell like like this character like you can literally sell your accounts to these people online these brokers and they they sell them to other people i mean we have a character for 200 dollars 112, um, 72. I mean, some people, let's see, let's see, maybe there's even characters worth a thousand. Yeah. So these two characters are worth $500. So you can literally sell your in game assets, even if they're not on the blockchain. And it just depends on the market and the supply and demand of that particular game or that particular character or NF NFT or digital asset. Because if you are, Having digital assets that are no longer in a game that is play to earn, those assets are to zero because they aren't usable. So I'm having a new outlook on play to earn games. Um, will I play them? Maybe. I just don't think that the caliber right now is one even remotely good compared to new games that are coming out and Web 2 um, and plus VR. Like that's a cool thing. But two, I don't see the gaming space providing crypto uh, as a form of play to earn. I think that it's going to go to cosmetics where like Ember Sword, where you essentially gain cosmetics and then you sell those NFTs uh, to other players for a cosm cosmetic versus um, trying to get a digital currency constantly for um earning like I don't think there's going to be an SLP or a Viz token for the future of play to earn games. I think they're going to be NFTs that are uh, kind of like owning the title in the current aspect where you can actually get cosmetic uh, looks and drops because those are what's going to make your character stand out. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm I do have a bunch of NFTs, but I don't think the future of crypto gaming is going to be, or play to earn is going to be tokens. I think they're going to be NFT drops that people can sell in the secondary market. And just like anything, if a company goes bankrupt or decides to exit those tokens, those NFTs, those digital assets are completely useless. So just be mindful of that um, because owning your own assets to me is not a real thing because you can literally sell or uh, sell any kind of asset or game if it's a game that is not on the blockchain or a game that is on the blockchain. So um, that's about it, guys. Until next time, peace. Oh, one more thing I totally forgot. If you're someone who's looking to make some money online and learn how to build recurring income and buy passive income, we have a free challenge down below. We have a link to uh, how to start earning passive income and recurring income uh, through means of online and how you can win your dream car. So that's it guys, until next time.
Peace.